Hi, Dave Smith here from DJS Photography. I'm continuing my series in the uh, as an introduction to the black and white uh, photography workflow that I use. I think there's something like uh, 18 or 19 videos now, which have taken us from all the way from loading film into the camera uh, through development. Um, through coating uh, paper and we're in the calibration process now. And I previously did a video that showed the calibration for maximum black to, to get your base exposure. And this is just the, uh, the second in uh, that series and now, now we're calibrating the other end of the scale is to, to calibrate the, uh, the separation in the highlights and, and also the linearization of the midtones. Okay, so you can see I've got a, a load of <coughs> um, negatives here and the prints from them. Uh, let me show you uh, this one first of all. I don't I'm not show it you against uh, the back of something. Let's go against the back of this one. Okay, so I think you can see there the so this is a step wedge. I actually got this from uh, Ron Reader. I've used his. Uh, I've used his manual for uh, QTR. I'll say something more about that in a moment. But here's the step wedge uh, that has been printed, and this is test number five. It took me about a week, a week to ten days to work through this uh, this part of the calibration process, and I did have some frustrations, and I'll say a bit about those. But this was test number five and you can see the step wedge here that's been generated. And let's just say a little about how that comes about. So the idea is that uh, with the uh, QTR, the quad tone rip from uh, 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 Jim Harrington, the idea is that the rip uh, determines the amount of ink that your printer puts down. So it, it ultimately means that you need a much less severe um, linearization curve. Uh, there is another process called precision digital negatives which, uh, which does generate uh, pretty severe curves. And I will show uh, calibration using that system as well. I do, I do quite like the precision digital negative system. Um, I, I can't show the calibration for that yet because my license is a personal use license and um, Mark Nelson uh, feels that if I show you the calibration process through my videos then that's uh, that's a training thing and he has a separate license for that. So I, I will be upgrading my license and, uh, and I'll show you the precision digital negative process uh, a little bit later. But the, the appeal for the QTR process is that it ends up having a, a much less severe um, linearization curve for the midtones uh, and that uh, that means that your the tonal information in your uh, digital file is uh, is less severely stressed uh, even even though you may well be using 16-bit uh, files and what you get uh, when, when you uh, kind of download the QTR which is shareware uh, by the way so if you download it um, from Jim Harrington's website if you download it and you like it, you, you, you pay the guy um, a, a small fee, and it is a small fee. Um, so I've downloaded it, I've actually used it for years, and my printer in Sweden has been calibrated for several years um, for, for use, but I've literally just uh, set up a, a printing setup here in Brussels, and so I had to go through the calibration process. And when you download that, you get, um, you get a series of what are called uh, printer profiles, and what these do is determine amounts of ink, uh, the amounts of the various inks that will be laid down uh, in your negative. Uh, and as you looked at that negative just now, there was a, a definite green uh, greenness to it coming from the, uh, the cyan, uh, I guess, uh, because the cyan is uh, is quite heavily loaded, and uh, the cyan and the yellow. Uh, the magenta is less uh, is less um, opaque to uh, to UV, uh, but it's still it's still in there. Uh, so you get these profiles; they determine the amounts of ink, and literally you just uh, you 
you just get yourself an, in, an initial try. You, you print out uh, from any any profile really, so uh, the uh, the step wage, uh, and try it and see what outcome you get. And then from there, what I try to do is to get to the other to the other side, as it were, of where I want to be, and then kind of between those two, hone into. Uh, to the uh, best possible negative. I had some difficulty doing that uh, and I'll talk through that in a moment. So that's uh, that's essentially the process. Uh, you want to make sure of one or two things because uh, you, you're you going to end up putting emotion to emotion. When you make a negative you want to uh, invert a positive and flip it horizontally so that when you put emotion to emotion it'll come out the right way. Now that might not seem like much of a deal but it, it, once or twice I've, uh, I've forgotten to do the uh, flipping horizontally and just printed the negative and then thought, well, okay, I've printed the negative, let's, let's just print it. But it's astonishing how wrong the picture looks if you haven't flipped that uh, horizontally. Um, and if you're not sure about that, give it a try. And it's, it is really quite interesting to see, as I said, how wrong that looks. Okay, so uh, try it out and let me know what you think. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into this. So what I um, what I did was to coat uh, several sheets of paper, and as I say, I've I've gone through eight testings here, and then a uh, and then a final print. So let me let me talk a little about what we uh, what we do. So uh, I finally got to this um, test five negative and uh, printed that. I mean, incidentally, I print on uh, direct contact film. Um, uh, I'll, I'll look up the uh, the manufacturer, but it's, it, mine comes from the UK. Almost everybody else, when you go looking into these things, almost everybody recommends Pictorico uh, because it holds more ink or it holds the ink better or, or whatever. For, uh, and I've used a couple of um, different types. I used ink press for a while uh, in Sweden. Uh, I use this because it comes from the UK. It's therefore easy to get hold of. Shipping is nothing like as expensive and it doesn't take as long to get to. So um, I think the hype over Pictorico is, is truly just that. This, this has made perfectly good negatives um, uh, for, for my use. So I've printed that, uh, printed that negative and what I've done, because this is test five, I've obviously done some tweaks to the, um, to the QTR profile. Now I'm going to show that uh, in a later video because I'm going to do that as a as a screencast. Uh, so the the actual sort of various software stages that I use, I'm going to put into a series of screencast videos. So I get that, and then you uh, print on onto your paper and your uh, emulsion, and I put a little kind of spot of uh, just aluminium foil up here to give me a paper a paper white against the negative I don't I'm not sure this one has cleared very well but it, it, it works fine uh, but you can definitely see there is tone between the zero percent and the background the, the, the paper underneath uh, and that's sort of one side that's that's gone way too far right so there's there's too little uh, ink being laid down so remember these are here. These are the dark patches that are going to print light. There's too much, there's too little ink there, sorry, uh, and so you're getting tone uh, right down here at 0, 1, 2, 3 percent. So I need to load uh, more ink uh, in, the, uh, in the dark, in the dark tones. Up here in the lights, the separation is really, uh, is really nice. Um, so if I go down here, you can see I've got 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, and 100. And I can just, I can just get a difference between the 95 and the 100. So, on this test, the um, the lightings giving me the dark prints, the dark tones in the print, were probably uh, getting to be okay. Now, what I then do is I scan that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Set the uh, black and white points right from the background and the aluminium foil piece that that fixes my zero and my 100% uh, in the Photoshop I have the I have the uh, I have the levels palette no I don't I have the curves palette set to percent uh, ink not um, percent pigment not the 
not the Photoshop 0 to 255, so that when I go and sample these patches, I'm getting percents. Okay? And, and ideally, what you want is when you put your uh, sample tool here, you get 1% and so on. Right? So I then do that. I'll turn this over. Uh, I don't know if you will be able to uh, read this on the video, but I'll just give you a, a little. So I put a, uh, an input value here, which is the percent that it should read off the step tablet. And I go up in fives uh, for the first view, then tens, and then fives again for the far end. Because what I'm looking for from this stage is separations in the uh, in the highlights and the shadows, okay? And I'm just seeing where the mid tones then fall. Uh, and as we go through that, you can see uh, when I when I then measure the step tablet. So what should be zero percent is actually reading seven, five is reading seven, uh, ten is reading as nine, and so on. So um, so these these are printing with these little, these highlights are printing with way too much tone. The in the dark inks are too uh, too light, as I said. And then if we look down here, uh, 80 is at 74%, 85 is at 83, 90 is at 96, 95, 99, and 100% is also at 99. So uh, there's a little bit of work to do in the shadows as well. And then I sort of analyze that. And what I've said here is um, this test is, if anything, a little worse than test four. So I was trying to, uh, to hone in on where I wanted. So I return to test four uh, to make the light black and the light light black limits. Uh, I've reduced those right, so that these will print uh, a little darker. Uh, too much tone in the light uh, print tone suggests that uh, the negative contrast is too low. So I can fix that either with uh, more ink in these dark negative tones or I can decrease the contrast of the paper by increasing the amount of restrainer. Now I don't really want to do that. I like to, uh, I like to fix on, uh, on what's kind of a middling contrast for my paper and then match the negative to it. So I've, I've then decided to increase the um, ink limits to uh, the dark ink limits, so that's the black, the cyan, the yellow, and the magenta, uh, to uh, 30 and increase the black boost to 40. Now those numbers are fairly meaningless. You just you're just literally changing the amount of ink. So that's what I did with that, and that gave me uh, test number uh, six. Okay, now if we look at, uh, that's just the negative test six. If we look at test six, uh, I think you can see that there's much better um, tone here. Uh, these are looking a little better, and if I look at my analysis of that, <coughs> excuse me, the input and output, so uh, input is zero, output is one. Uh, at 5% it's still zero, at 10% it's uh, one, at 15% it's zero, at 20% it's one. So what I've done with this, I've really loaded the dark inks and really uh, upped the boost because I want to, I want to move to the, other, to the other side, as it were, of where I'm aiming from test five, and I've, I feel I've really achieved that here. If I go to the other end, 100% uh, is at 99, 95% actually reads 96, 90% reads 90. So actually the change to those uh, light black and light light black inks uh, that, are, that are giving me the dark tones, I feel is pretty well spot on. So I'm going to leave those where they are. I now need to get these tones uh, right to put out. So I now know that I'm somewhere between what I had actually in test four and what I, what I had in test uh, six. Okay, so I've really kind of boosted that. So let's have a look at uh, test test eight, I think. <coughs> so here is test uh, eight. Well, I've picked up the negative for test seven there. Uh, and let's have a little look at that. So here are my values. Let's have a look at this side first. You can see I haven't really changed the light, light blacks and, and all that. You can still see that tone is about uh, is about right. And if we look at these values, uh, the input as the zero percent step is actually reading three. So it's a little high. The five is reading five percent is reading three. Ten is reading ten. Fifteen, twenty, and actually these tones are now looking pretty well pinned down and just uh, just have a tiny bit of issue right up here in the very very 
uh, highest highlights. And what I'm going to do uh, next, so what I've said here in my analysis is this has linearized the curve well. There are some points uh, tweaked to darken, so uh, I need to uh, I need to move the 5%, I need to uh, just shift the 80% and the 90% and I'm going to do that um, with, a, with a curve. So what I've, what I've got here now is a, is a pretty, good, um, it's pretty good fixing of the two ends, the highlights and the darks. And then I make a, a curve and I, then I do that in Photoshop curves. I literally open any file go to uh, adjustments curves and then uh, make sure that's reading uh, percent inks and you uh, you make an adjustment curve for that and as I say I'm going to show that uh, in a completely different um, screencast video uh, this doesn't look to me like it's cleared very thoroughly but uh, it's good enough for our purposes and we can see that uh, now that the darks are very good these are starting to look like they've got tone and if we look at these now what I've got is uh, the zero is actually reading two percent, which isn't bad. So that what that means is that if I if I have a if I have a highlight in my uh, print that should be a, uh, absolutely a paper white, it's going to just have the very slightest hint of tone, and uh, and that's fine. Um, my five percent is actually reading four. My 10% uh, on the step wedge is reading 11. My 15 is reading 16. So these are these these are pretty good, um, and that's a consequence of the, uh, the the curve that that one then applies. So having fixed the two ends, having fixed uh, the amount of ink to um, to separate the highlights, and having fixed the uh, the amount of ink to separate the shadows. You then use uh, Photoshop curves to linearize the midtones, and these have really linearized well. 30 is at 30, 40 is at 40, 50 is at 52, and so on. So that's a nice, that's a nice linearized uh, step tablet. So that that was the end of that process. I still need to show, I need still need to show you the uh, the process of uh, of changing the ink limits in, uh, in QTR and I also want to show you the process in Photoshop of uh, linearizing the midtones uh, but that's done a really good job. And the final thing I want to show you here today is uh, the actual uh, print that I made. So what I did then, uh, show you this on the back. So this is, uh, this is a negative that's made uh, with with the uh, particular uh, QTR profile loaded for my uh, Epson 7800 and then the Photoshop curve applied okay so that's the uh, that's the negative that I produced this is an image that was actually shot in uh, Iceland in October 2012 and that's, that sky was unbelievable and here is uh, the print now the print is the print isn't perfect. Uh, I, I just I just wanted to see a print, having spent uh, uh, the best part of two weeks getting the calibration uh, sorted out. I just wanted to see a print, so uh, I brushed on some uh, some sensitizer and I printed this uh, this negative, and it's and it's actually coming out quite nice. The issues that I have with it is that the uh, the um, very foreground part of the image, this uh, this sort of bank to the river, just sort of blends into the actual river itself uh, a little bit too much. So I just want to try and get some separation between those two parts.